Have you ever wondered who made it possible for the German Luftwaffe to be able to take off from anywhere in their newly occupied territories? Who were the men behind these large and complex airbases? What organization worked at such speed and with such precision that the German Air Force was able to mount a full-scale offensive against Great Britain only weeks after they had conquered Belgium and Northern France? Let's find out in this episode. In the pre-war years, Germany was battling an economic crisis. It's in these difficult times that a small, unknown organization was established. It was called the Reichsarbeitsdienst, or RAD for short. The RAD was a state-run labor organization that initially focused on reducing unemployment during the 1930s, but was later repurposed to support military and war-related construction projects. Their greatest feats before the war were the brand new spacious autobahns or that connected all German cities. If you visit Germany today, you will surely be traveling over a few of these expressways. What first started as a voluntary service in 1934 quickly changed in favor of a more military context. Every German man between the age of 18 and 25 was obliged to work a six months period in the RAD. This period would be utilized to prepare the individual for military service. Not only did this labor organization help in stabilizing the economy, it was also a good way of making the men used to receiving orders, working as a group, and inclining the young men to a specific political preference. This channel is, as you all know, purely historical. I don't discuss politics here. But it's reasonable to say the state was preparing the warriors and National Socialist voters of the future. Now, you may ask yourself what a labor service has to do with an airman channel. Well, it is estimated that about one million of these young boys that received pre-military training and branch selection in the RAD went on to serve in the German Air Force at some point in the war. The ones with good eyesight, a very good understanding of mathematics and quick reflexes were sent to pilot school, other went to aircrew school. The men with mechanical training became ground crew. A lot of very fine Luftwaffe aces, like Karlheinz Meltzer or Hans Philipp, got their first taste of military service in the RAD. Now that we know who the RAD men were, it's time to look at what they did. The German Blitzkrieg of 1940 came as an unstoppable wave of men and steel to the Belgian army. Our armies and air force were small in comparison to our neighbors. As a Belgian, I am proud to say we put up one hell of a fight for 18 days against an enemy outranking us in every way. Many pre-existing Belgian airfields were taken over. The need for more fields, however, became immediately clear. And this is where the RAD comes in. Not only did they follow the advancing armies through Europe to immediately fix or build all necessary infrastructure, their most important task was building fortifications and airfields. If you've been following my channel, you will have noticed some videos about a tower in Popering and a huge airbase in Vlamerting. Well, these complexes have all been made by the RAD. In coordination with the men of the Bau Pioniere, the construction pioneers of the German Wehrmacht, all these new airfields were constructed within a few weeks by thousands of labor service men. They were not only fast, but also very disciplined, professional in their work and committed to the cause. Looking at uniforms makes it just a bit more personal and brings us closer to history, so that's exactly what we are going to do. Here we see a German Reichsarbeitsdienst uniform. It belonged to a young man from the German Husum region, just south of the border with Denmark. Husum was home to the third group of the 76th RAD Battalion, or Abteilung in German. These wool uniforms are very similar to the ones in the regular army. They are made from the same materials and only differ in having a more brownish color to them, specific to the RAD. They follow the same 1936 patterns and use the same hooks and buttons. The insignia, however, are very different. Our jacket has the Vormann insignia, which would be a Gifreiter in the army. The pre-war caps were known as Robin Hood caps because of their shape. Once the war broke out, these proved impractical and less popular than the army type M40 cap, so they started issuing these. The cap insignia is a spade with the national colors and the known political insignia. No breast eagle was worn. The collar tabs are also very different. These type of tabs could be worn until the position of Tripp Führer, 
which would be an army Feldwebel. The belt buckle is made as all models, but bears the spade insignia, like on the cap. The boots were usually the typical high leather jack boots. The trousers and greatcoats are exactly the same as the regular models, apart from the color. This greatcoat belonged to a Feldmeister, a mid-level officer field supervisor. Near the front lines or in combat, they wore the standard German helmet. It is rare to see a helmet with RAD decals on the side, but they do exist. They usually received Luftwaffe decaled helmets. The RAD was often used as stopgap measure and proved their worth in combat on the Eastern Front and in the defense of Berlin in 1945. Had it not been for these men and the labor service, the German Luftwaffe would never had the influence, combat capabilities, and prestige we now know them for. The RAD will go down as a lesser known, perhaps less interesting topic to some, but it is because of them we now still have many relic to explore and marvel at. It's interesting to see what a group of motivated young people can do if they set their minds to it. They didn't choose the best cause to do all this work for, but I guess they did not know any better. If everyone around you is saying red, how difficult must it have been to say blue, and specifically at that young age and in that time frame? Nonetheless, the RAD were the only true but mostly forgotten airfield builders. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this kind of videos, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be seeing you later.